Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk about the top five embroidery disasters that occur to all of us and how to fix them. You're going to be amazed at, you know, even newbies, these things happen to intermediate embroiderers and experienced longtime embroiderers stumble upon some of these five embroidery disasters pretty much every year, at least once a year, right? So it's so nice to have you all joining in. I have to share this lovely comment, which was the very first comment. And Paula DeGard, I, I mean, that just warmed my heart when I read your comment while I was waiting to go live. Thank you for such kind words. Thank you so much, really lovely. Chris Yost, we're gonna be sharing your small town charm towards the end of today's program. Thank you for posting it. You did a beautiful job. And all of you folks who haven't seen her work yet, wait till you see it. You're gonna just love it. So make sure you pipe in, tell us where you're watching from. I see Missouri is checking in, Ohio, Mississippi, Springtown, Texas, Indiana, and uh, it's just great to have everybody here. San Marcos, California, Steve Kaufman, beautiful part of our country, um, San Marcos. I've had a lot of good times out there in uh, San Marcos. And we have Anne, Anne, uh, Anne <clears throat> excuse me, Hemsley from the UK, Lincoln. Thanks for joining us today. That's a far cry from here, all the way across the pond, right? So why don't we go ahead and get started? But remember, if you have questions, if you have disasters that have happened to you and you don't see them on my list, share them and uh, we can chat about it and you know how we would fix it. So the five disasters that I have identified when I look back on some of the struggles that have occurred in my own sewing room is thread shredding. Oh, I that just curdles my milk, as Deborah Jones would say. Fabric caught under the hoop, not just caught, but stitched under the hoop. Um, number three, stitching over target stickers or templates. Even though we know we should move it, remove it before we stitch, often we're in a hurry to get going and sometimes stitch right over that. Typos. I don't know if it's happened to you, but I know I often don't spot a typo until it's stitched in thread on fabric. And I spend a lot of time, you know, creating my own text. So I don't know why that's such a problem. Fabric falling into the hoop is another problem. So they're my five top um, disasters that happen, that, that happen. Oh, and Judy Whitaker, you're finally working on your town hall small town charm. All right, that's okay. You got plenty of time to catch up. So town hall was in June. And we can't wait to see, Judy, what you do with your town hall. So let's see. Oh, Veronica Miller says, so far, all of her disasters happened before she discovered dime products. Wow, that is lovely. Thank you so much for that. And, you know, I have to tell you, you know, all of the product that is uh, that we offer for sale here at Dime has been developed or found because I have problems and I need a solution. And so does Deborah Jones. So between the two of us, we find a way to, uh, you know, make it happen, make it happen. So let's see. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Well, we'll have to tell you what today's program is um, brought to you by. What product? It's the Stitch Ripper. And if you're not familiar with it, well, we're going to get to know it a little bit today. We're going to um, rip out two different projects, you know, because that's a solution for sure. Okay, thread shredding. A mouthful. Try to say that three times really fast. This is what it looks like. Oh, oh, it just drives you crazy, right? You know, you set everything up, you have the stabilizer, the embroidery. This is a, a small quilt. So this is actually batting, backing, and the top fabric. And uh, I had so much thread shredding, but I learned often what it can be. Number one, it can be the wrong size needle. So if you're having skip stitches, thread shredding, it could very well be that you have the wrong needle and that can be in either size or type. So let's take a look. Um, the 65 by nine is the tiniest needle we should be using really for embroidery. And that's just for micro text, tiny, tiny text. And then the most common needle size that we use is the 75 by 11. But I find on uh, when I'm quilting that at 85, 13, or even a 9014 heavier blade will work best for me. But it doesn't just stop there. You also have to make sure that you select 
the right type. So is it going to be a sharp or a ballpoint? Now remember, ballpoints slide through the yarns of a knit fabric, while a sharp point is what we need to uh, to enter and exit nice and clean on woven fabrics. And woven fabrics are what all of our cotton quilting, you know, it's a woven fabric, right? So make sure you're using the right needle point for um, your fabric. And we, you know, we have some people here in the building who don't embroider. And they kind of look at us like, well, aren't all needles sharp? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> anyway, and of course, thread. I mean, you have to have a high quality thread. Don't be fooled by a high price. It doesn't guarantee that it's going to stitch really well on your machine. I swear by our exquisite by dime that we have 288 colors to choose from. I have multiple brands of machines um, that I stitch this thread on and I never get a hiccup as long as I am watching all of my other tips, you know, my, uh, my, um, La la la, my, my needles, the point size and type. And another thing could be um, stitch length because I've noticed that sometimes on um, especially quilting designs, the design might be a little, the stitch length might be a little too short. So I'm gonna flip over into software and show you and Pep how I change and how all of you can change in our software, a stitch length. So here's a really pretty overall design. It measures seven by 12, and I'm using this design on placemats. And the stitch length is two by 2.4 millimeters, which, you know, probably will be okay. But if it's anything below that, like 2.2, I'm probably going to have some thread sh shredding. So even 2.6, now we may think that sounds like a basting stitch, if you're on the sewing side, but it's not. So don't be afraid to lengthen that stitch length, click apply and then save as, make sure you save as in the format for your machine so that when you send it to the machine, it has the right properties, that right stitch length that you changed. And it's always a good idea to save as under a new name. And you like, what is this called? Well, right now it's called design five. So we could call design five and I would do like underscore SL for stitch length. And that means I, in my mind, that tells me, oh, I adjusted the stitch length there. So let's see. Uh, somebody loves my earrings. Uh, Edward loves my earrings. Thank you. Aren't they fun? Well, you know, I didn't make them. I mean, it's my embroidery collection, but Annette Yeager, who some of you have met early in the, earlier in the year, she stitches all of the earrings that I wear on the show. She uses, uses my lace jewelry collection and makes me a new pair more often than I'd like to admit because she's always stitching me be beautiful earrings. Okay, let's head back to find out what is next. So fabric caught under the hoop. And I know this is something that happens to everybody, right? And it's usually at the last minute, this towel is looking quite lovely from the front. If I was really paying attention, I would see that, hmm, it looks a little whiter, right? On the right side of that hoop than it does in the, the other, you know, three quarters of the left side of the hoop because that fabric is bleeding through. And when you flip over the hoop, there you have it. There you have it, yep. Okay, so let's go to the overhead cam. And I'm going to show you, uh, well, first I'm gonna pull out the Stitch Rich Ripper so you can get a good look at that. And of course it comes with instructions. And I have the, the largest blade installed right now. It also comes with a narrow blade and we're gonna use that in a minute. It's got a brush and oil and also a cord to charge. So we'll just get this out of the way. I'll push aside that blade. And so here's, you know, a Hoop It Up Camp 2021, right? So I caught my problem midstream and I need to finish that circle and also add the satin for the basketball. But then I realized I had a piece of fabric underneath. Now, depending on what this is going to be used for, the easy fix may literally be just trimming that away, kind of like an applique. It's gonna be on the wrong side of um, whatever this item is. If this is gonna be a bag, maybe it would be on the inside of the bag. 
So, you know, that's a quick fix that you could do. And frankly, you could, I could have even done that after I stitched that satin. But uh, I just thought I'd show you that that's one problem that can happen. But of course, this is the one that is the real, huh, the one you just kind of, uh, because this happens all the time, right? Especially on a multi-needle machine, if you're doing applique or even a single needle machine, you're pulling your hoop on and off. Um, you can easily get a piece of the fabric folded under and snatched where you don't want it. So I'm going to turn on my blade and I can hear it. I don't know if you can. And then I'm just going to rub those stitches, the blade across those fill stitches. And I'll show you what my hand is doing underneath. So I'm pushing the thread on this side to kind of create a little resistance against, against that blade. And I'm just going to, you kind of have to handle it rough. Now, I will tell you, if this happens and it's something that you want to stitch, it, rip out, and it's just on the stabilizer, don't remove the stabilizer. Leave that stabilizer in place and that will help protect your fabric, right? And look at that. It is really cleaning that up so nicely. Oh my goodness. Look, it's practically clear already. So let me turn this off and I'll flip this over and then we just kind of pick it away, right? We, where is it? <laughs> Here we go, this side and they just come out like that, just like that, that's it. Now, I could put this back on my machine. Oh my goodness, I love how nice and clean. You're gonna take some scissors and you're gonna chop off that nasty stuff, all that's hanging out there. And then we're gonna put this back, you know, we're not gonna do it here, but I would put this back on my machine and I would just advance, not advance, but travel backwards in the design to locate this area. And once I release that extra fabric, I still have a little bit caught just on this, these outside corners. So let's go ahead and get them out of harm's way. It's so rewarding. Oh my goodness, you're gonna love it. Look at that, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It's so cool. Yeah, so easy to use. Okay, well, we have more. And then you have this little mess. That's normal, that's normal. You're gonna just put that in the trash, no big deal. And some of you, I know you like to do fiber work and you can do it like that. You can add those, I mean, keep those fabrics. Okay, so what's next? Stitching over target stickers or templates. This does happen, this does happen. Here we go. So what do you do there? Well, one thing that's really good about a white target sticker when you are stitching white thread, you just peel off that target sticker, right? But if it was yellow, then you have a problem. So you'll probably use this stitch ripper to rip out that lettering from the wrong side and then restitch the lettering. So that's the easy solution to that for sure. Okay, typos. Now, typos can happen when you least expect it. Here we have three aprons that we thought were identical, but they're not. Look at the one on the left, right? We left out the U for beauties. And it, you know, like I said, often this isn't um, identified until it's stitched in thread, in on fabric, Ugh, it's horrible. So let's now go back over to um, my Perfect Embroidery Pro. And I have, you know, I have a new file here and I've clicked on my text tool and then when I click into, you know, uh, the screen, the workspace, the letter A sits there. So now in the properties box, the text window, I'm going to write time and I'm going to misspell it. So as you can see over there in the right little corner, I have it, I have it spelled T-I-M-E-E. -E. And when I hit the um, space bar, uh, I'm having some lag here because I have... We have so much going on in this computer. We have um, we have spell check that is that is tied to Microsoft's operating system, so it will identify a misspelled word and put that little red line underneath of it and tell you that you have a misspelling. And if you want to 
continue with that misspelling, like if it's someone's name or something in that manner, then you just hit the space bar, click ap apply, and it will allow you to stitch the word however you want to spell it. But it is there for you when, um, when you're not connected to the internet and doing a Facebook Live and have video and audio and all these different things hooked up to this laptop. So just demanding a little too much. But some typos are not always actually misspellings. Sometimes you're thinking of a great vacation, maybe a wonderful memory uh, when you were skiing in, Ste in Steamboat, Colorado. And frankly, you were really thinking about um, maybe Mr. Dreamboat that you met there or you went with and here you you actually stitch out dreamboat so i have a couple samples of that so let's head over and take a look so here i've stitched this steamboat correctly and dreamboat which i don't you know i must if i'm going to give this to someone who was at steamboat with me they're not going to want dreamboat right so we're going to remove those uh d and r and then i could just put this back and and drop in the S and T to correct it. This is King Star metallic thread, that fabulous metallic thread that we all love. So now for this small area, this satin letter, the D and the R, I'm gonna switch blades and it's really very easy to do. I just take my thumb and pop off that larger blade and open up this uh, package to put the smaller blade in place and I just, you know, center it in that opening and then press it down. There we have it. And then I'll just turn that on. And again, always from the back, right? We always do it from the back because if we do it from the front, you could mar the fabric. So your best bet is always from the back. And we're just going to stitch, just let push those needle, push that blade right into those satin stitches. Just let it do its work. As you can see, it's, see how it's separated already? Isn't that awesome? So now I'll go around this D, this curves. The curves are a little tricky because you wanna center that blade right in the middle of that satin stitch. I mean, that's the whole key, centering, centering it right in the, over the satin. And of course, that's where your bobbin thread is, right? And we'll just take, you know, a minute. It doesn't take all that long to get this D out. It's so rewarding. I mean, imagine if this was an item that was really precious to you and you made an error, you know, a mistake. You had this embroidery disaster on it. You wouldn't want to throw it away, right? Well, the Stitch Ripper really pays for itself in allowing you to remove stitches without harming the fabric. And I'm going to flip this over. So you can get a good look from the top side. Let me turn that off. And then we'll just work those satin threads out and out they come. I hate to waste King Star, right? Don't we all love King Star? We get the absolute best results on metallic thread when we use King Star. So I have a little more work to do, but all in all, this is really fast and easy work, fast and easy work. I mean, prior to this, whew, I don't know how long that would have taken, right? So we'll just turn this back on, just give it a couple more. And of course, you know, you can take the time to also remove those running stitches that, uh, the underlay that occurs before all, all, you know, embroidery. And, you know, some of it you may need a seam ripper for, it, or, you know, depending on how brave you are, you, uh, this stitch ripper will remove straight stitches, but, you know, it sometimes a seam ripper is just as easy just to pull out some of that at the very end. So we have that one little corner giving me a little bit of trouble. There we go. And notice, you'll see how your stabilizer starts to fuzz away. So, you know, use caution. Don't press too hard because the stabilizer is protecting your fabric, right? The back of the, 
fabric is protected by that stabilizer. And that's pretty key. We don't want to cut all the way through our fabric. Here we go. We'll just some of these underlay stitches. And now this is a metallic thread. So, you know, that's a little stiffer than a 40 weight polyester, but oh, it comes out with no problem at all. No problem at all. I bet some of you are timing me. And of course on the replay, on the replay, we could also see just how long that took. Boy, I know I've sat in, in front of many a television show pulling out stitches that took a heck, of, a heck of a lot longer than that with Stitch Ripper. So out it comes and almost there, but boy, is that fast work? My goodness, I just love that. Okay, we're gonna move on to the rest of our um, disasters because, you know, unfortunately there's more. So how do you clean this blade? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. It comes with this brush. And I find that if you just put that, the bristles of the brush right into that blade from both the back and the front, that will release all of the, um, you know, little the snips of, of thread or even any, you know, furry fibers from the stabilizer and so forth. So pretty good, huh? It's hard to not finish. Okay, but I'm not going to finish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kirsten Swanson. It does not work on Mac. I the spell check um, it, in our software. It works with Microsoft platforms because it's tied to Microsoft platforms. So I hope that answers um, your question about that. Number five is fabric falling into the hoop. Now um, I know that you all know what my solution to this is, and that most certainly is a product that you're familiar with. But sometimes you can't work with hoop guard. Like this is a large tote bag, so it has a big mouth opening. They're difficult to stitch on a single needle machine because it's a flat bed. So here the tote bag is turned inside out, right? So it's the wrong side that is um, outside and the, in, the right side, the design area is actually where that target sticker is. That's what's captured in the, in the hoop itself. But then I've lifted the whole body of the tote bag over um, the head of the machine. And boy, that's a great way to keep um, the, you know, the head, the, the other side of the bag falling into the sewing field. So that's horrible when that happens, just horrible. Okay. HoopGuard is our solution to, to fabric rolls, such as a quilt sandwich or a terry cloth towel that is going to um, fall into the sewing field. And because today, this Saturday is National uh, Sew a Jelly Roll Day, I have a, uh, a jelly roll quilt on the weightless quilter, which is... Um, the best way to hold all that fabric above the bed of the sewing machine. And so I also have my hoop guard attached to the right side, the right edge of my hoop so that it will stop the roll from falling into the sewing field. But also that weightless quilter is holding out the quilt, letting it expand away from the hoop holding the weight above the machine bed so that it, there's little chance that any portion of the quilt is going to fall into the sewing field. So um, I hope that maybe you're going to celebrate National Sew a jo Jelly Roll Day on Saturday. And if you're like me, you have a jelly roll top or two that are um, waiting to be quilted. And if they are, the weightless quilter a snap hoop monster and a hoop guard are your solutions to those problems, right? Isn't that great? So do you have any questions about the weightless quilter or the uh, hoop guard? I hear some of you are saying you're a little blurry, but the inside is not. So we will um, lose a camera or two and that will help. That will definitely help. So um, the weightless quilter, I just love that weightless quilter and that hoop guard. It, the, it's like the triple threat, weightless quilter, snap hoop monster, and hoop guard. When you have those three things holding your quilt, you are guaranteed success when you are quilting with your embroidery machine. And you don't have to worry about that fifth disaster, 
where everything has fallen into the sewing field. So uh, we're, a, we're having a little bit of bandwidth problem here. So maybe we lose the weightless quilter camera. Um, and if you just uh, bear with us, we are still here. We are still broadcasting. So if you just bear with us, I'm going to pull this camera out and uh, that might help a little bit. Valerie Newby, you love your weightless quilter? Yeah, me too, I know. Isn't it great? Last week we had Retha Ranke here from Wyoming and she, you know, commenting in the chat and she was saying that she was able to finish a whole quilt in one day with her weightless quilter. So cool, absolutely. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Small Town Charms. For those of you who are new today joining us, this is a program that's been going on all year here at Dime. And all of these designs are still available for you to download for free from our, the designs website. And every month we have uh, two versions of the one design, one for a five by seven hoop and the other for a seven by 12 hoop. January was the quilt shop. February, February was the uh, bake shop and then a dress shop in March. April saw a flower shop while we had an outdoor cafe for May, the town hall for June, Scoops, which is the home of the giant cone as the sign illustrates for July. And then August was the gazebo. Uh, and last month, September, was the book nook. How cute is that? How cute is that? So we had a lot of fun with that. Yellow Rose wants to know, is there a hoop guard available for the 10 needle machine? We don't make a hoop guard for the 10 needle machine because 10 needle machines, you know, they're tubular. So you're either hanging your tubular item underneath the, uh, the bed, the throat of the machine, or if it's a flat piece of fabric, then there really isn't that much harm. So um, we, that's why we don't make it. And plus there's 10 needles. Boy, there's a lot of that whole needle bar is so big to hit a hoop guard. So that's kind of tough, yeah. Okay, we do have, we love watching, uh, sharing your small town charms. And we encourage you to use a hashtag dime so along. And, and post it up on social media. We search for that every Wednesday night and Thursday morning and find uh, whatever new ones we've been able to locate. And this week we have Chris Yost. She named her book DL Bliss Books and she's got a big open sign in the window. You'll notice that people are customizing their small town charms to express, you know, maybe their own hometown, their favorite bookstore, or their favorite bake shop, quilt shop, that kind of thing. And that was the whole idea behind Small Town Charms, was to encourage people to use software to explore all the possibilities that they could, you know, possibly do with these designs, these Small Town Charms. And boy, have people had a blast. So Chris Yost, uh, she also added a a window, another applique on her door. And that looks beautiful. She's got two shrubs out front and a little kitty um, sitting there waiting for its owner to come out of the bookstore. But not only that, under her awning, which is a second hooping, and of course all those instructions are included with the download link. Um, she's got Once Upon a Time, which is adorable, just adorable. So many people, you know, they put secret things underneath their awnings, a whole lot of fun, yes. Let's see, uh, Marjorie, you, uh, can you order just some of those pieces? You lost some pieces when you made a move of your weightless quilter, sure. Just call our customer service department and I'm sure somebody can get you all set up with that. You don't need to buy another whole weightless quilter because you just lost your clamps. So we are 888-739-0555, and uh, we'll be happy to accommodate you. Okay, so wasn't that a lot of fun? I hope you are all enjoying the Small Town Charms. I'm finishing up October's, which will be released on September 30th. It's always the last Thursday of the month where I reveal the next month's Small Town Charm. 
And that following Saturday, so just two days later, my friends over at OML Embroidery, led by Sue S. Brown and her husband, they um, have a sew along on YouTube and Facebook Live. So you can uh, download those designs on Thursday, gather your fabrics and materials, and then sew along with Sue on Saturday to do that. Yeah, Kirsten, you can't wait to see October. Well, me too. I can't wait till it's done. It's going to be really fun. So this week's program was brought to you by the Stitch Ripper. I hope you'll take advantage of the uh, introductory price and that free shipping. You know, the Stitch Ripper is a fabulous tool to have in your sewing studio. I can't tell you how many times, um, you know, I've before I had my Stitch Ripper, I wished I had something like that. I've thrown away very good garments, very good tote bags, quilt blocks, you know, just out of total frustration or not having enough time to sit with a Stitch Ripper and rip out, you know, a, a disaster. So the Stitch Ripper is what comes to the solution. And you saw that we, we removed those complex fills really easily, really simply. The satin stitch, just as lovely, comes with two blades. You know, I love that wide blade for the complex fill. And that skinnier blade is great on lettering. Uh, and they're both make fast work of uh, a task that usually takes an awful long time to do that. But uh, I, I appreciate you, joining me today and i hope to see you here next week same time one o'clock on thursday central time always so we'll see you then